Well, hello, hello, Young and the Restless Daily Recap fans. Today's Daily Recap is for Monday, March the 6th, 2023. Monday, March the 6th. Well, as you can see, I'm wearing a different color because it is celebration time. Come on. Now, I'm not a singer, as you, you all just heard, right? <laughs> but listen, 1,008 viewers, 1,008 as of, I think it was Sunday, we hit 1,004 on Saturday. Phenomenal, phenomenal. We did it. I'm telling you, I'm so happy. So I said, you know what? I'm going to change up the color. I'm going from my, from my normal black to red celebration, happy fun time red. So listen, that was about the best thing about the show today. <laughs> it was nothing really going on to scream and shout about. We have um, we have Nick trying to pretty much he's going to puff his chest with Adam, right? He's going to put Adam in check. He says, he sees Adam in society and he goes, uh, are you waiting for someone? Are you meeting someone? And Adam says, Adam says, nope, I'm all alone. He goes, well, I'm just going to sit down here. And Adam's like, be my guest. Let me guess. You have something you want to say. So, of course, Nick has to talk about Sally doesn't need you going. To, you said you were you wanted to go to all her ultrasounds and her doctor's appointment. She doesn't need that. And Adam says, first of all, I said some of them. That's what I said. I didn't say all. But yet and still, you know, you're, you you don't need to insinuate yourself in her life. And Adam's like, well, for one thing, that's not just her baby. And I am in the picture and I want to be involved. I'm not here to cause trouble between you you two. I have reconciled the fact, the fact she's with you, Nick. I know it. You don't have to say it again. She's with you. But this is my child. And he says, I'm going to be a presence in the child's life. And I want to go to some ultra, you know, he's like, please. But he is trying to be a better person. He says, you know, um, after really doing a wake up call, Victor does know him best. And he's like, oh, what? Now you're saying dad knows you best. And he goes, yes, he knew I wasn't going to be happy at Jabo. And he was right. I wasn't happy at Jabo. But he says, out of everybody, dad is the only one that wants to see the good in me, that feels I have potential. And you know what, Nick, I do. He says, but I realize I've given you all, you know, reasons to, I've done some things, but I'm changing that. I'm changing that. So. I'm not here, like I said, to come between you and Sally, but I, I will be a presence. And I was like, good for you, Adam. And Nick, and he paid his little bill and he got up and Nick just kind of looked at him. All the things that Adam, Nick couldn't get him off his game. Nick couldn't snark him into anything. And Nick just looked like, huh, maybe my brother is trying to turn his life around or, or change change his personality for the better not really turn his life around just change his personality for the better because realistically everybody who here thinks nick's nick really wants sally she was just something to do she was just you know he loved picking up Ale um adam's foul balls loved it adam loves picking up nick's foul balls they love it they they love that right but as a, for a long haul, Nick and, Nick, Nick and Sally are never a long haul. So that ended the way, not the way Nick thought. Nick wanted confirmation that Adam needed to stay out the baby's life, right? Then we have Jack and Diane. Of course, I fast forwarded. Oh my goodness, the majority of that. You know, I heard enough. I played enough where she says, I can't marry you, Jack. I just can't do it. I can't draw put any more distinction between you and any of your family members. And, and you know, and Jeremy is not gone. 
and, and I don't want any, just any more trouble. I wish he were dead. Mm. You see what she said? Mm. Guess what idea she's trying to put into Jack's head. See, I wish he were dead. Mm. So that Jack could now decide, because Diane will orchestrate a situation, whether it's real or imagined, that her life is in danger and Jack is going to have to, he's going to try to kill Stark, right? Before he could hurt my Diane. Harrison's Dee Dee. Speaking of which, have you seen her spend an ounce of time with that grandchild? The one that's supposed to have been the light of her life, right? No, we haven't. So of course, two, two three scenes of them by the end of the show. Yes, Jack. Yes. I'll marry you. Of course you said that. Now that he's pledged his unlying love and devotion and going to keep you safe no matter what, now, yes, you're going to marry him. So you can manipulate him into committing a crime. Mm. But I guess they are not married, her and Stark, because he would have, you, you know, Phyllis and him, they had a chat and I'll get to that a little bit later, but I think he would have dropped that bomb be before now if she were actually married to him, right? I, I really believe so. So then we have the unlikely conversation between Kyle and Billy. And Billy's like, look, I'm happy for your father. He deserves some happinesses. And Diane gives it to him good. And so he goes, but Kyle, how do you feel about it? And Kyle was kind of reluctant to talk to Billy because they are not close, right? But he did say, you know what? I'm cautious. I'm cautious. And so Billy kind of ended up saying, well, okay, be cautious. But I mean, in the end, support your father, support your mother. I mean, you know, whatever. It's, it's going to be what it's going to be. But, you know, they still should be supported. So Kyle's just thinking about it. Um, yeah, whatever, you know, come on now. In the end, Kyle be the next one saying, I'm, I'll be the one to kill Jeremy Stark for you. He, he'll fall right in line with that, right? Then we have, didn't you just love it? Summer and Sally running into each other at Crimson Lights. And Summer turn around with her little bag. Sally. And Sally is got a secret summer oh is that a, a some sugar treats for the family a treat for uh harrison breakfast treat oh does he have a sweet tooth she's the kind of like the crap sally you you hardly care about my son's diet you know or breakfast favorites What's going on? You know, and look, I haven't, my dad hasn't talked about you in a while. I haven't, you know, had gotten an update. Have you guys finally fizzled out? Are you over? Is that why? Why no? <laughs> She's like, okay. And she goes, well, you know what? I guess I, since you, I don't want you to hear it from anyone else. There is news. I'm pregnant. And Summer's like, <laughs> right? And then they, of course, cut to however many scenes and we come back to them. You are pregnant with my father's child. Well, no, it's not your father's child. You know, <laughs> she did that on purpose, letting Summer think she was pregnant with her father's child, right? <laughs> and then she goes, no. She goes, wait a minute. You can't be that, you cheated on him already? And she goes, no, it wasn't like that. Which actually, you know, her and Nick were casually dating. It really wasn't like that. Was it really everybody? They hadn't even defined what they are. What's up, right? That was Nick, what's up? So <laughs> <laughs> so she goes no nah, there was just a brief moment you know a goodbye uh, ending things and so then she, she goes oh so it's Adam's baby 
And then Summer pretend, just goes on this whole rant about Sally is causing chaos in her father's life. Nick deserves better than dad. Of course, Nick will stay. She goes, no, uh, Nick knows all about it right after it happened. And he and I are fine. And he is really, he's going to be there for me. And Summer's like, of course he is. That's the kind of person he is. But she's like, but is this the best thing for him, Sally? You're selfish. You're selfish. See, because really, you're using my father as some kind of wedge, some kind of, you know, barrier between you and Adam. In other words, say, because you still want Adam. And really, everybody, she still does want Adam. This is not what's good for my father. And she says, and and something she said before she stormed off, like, and if you weren't so selfish, you, you would see it and you would know it, right? So anyway, Summer barrels off in, in summer fashion, right? So then we have Phyllis sitting herself up off of Stark's couch and he's telling her the story about how he saw her stumbling out of the Grand Phoenix and he was concerned and he went after her and she's laying there. She, she wait, first she was laying there and she kind of sits up, wait a minute. I remember hearing cars, a car. Oh my God, did I get, did I get in a car? Like, did I drive? And he's like, no, but you walked into pretty much oncoming traffic and there was a lot of swerving and yeah, passed right out there on the street. I ran out, out there. She, he goes, I kind of hurt my back a bit <laughs> picking you up. I'm like, shut up. You didn't hurt your back. For one, if if that part of the story really happened, he says, you know, I, I ran out and he ended up saying, I ended up making it look like it was kind of graceful, like you kind of slipped versus falling out drunk in traffic because, ooh, how would that play in the media? Wow. Right? How the mighty have fallen. And I was thinking, everybody, let's think back how that scene played out on Friday. Phyllis blew up at Lauren and Michael. Did you see Stark anywhere in the lobby? Because I know I did not see Stark anywhere in the lobby. As a matter of fact, what did Lauren tell Michael to do? Go after her, Michael. So Michael heads off after Phyllis. Now, either Phyllis in her stumbling self, well, somehow I think she did give him the slip because the next scene we see Michael and Lauren, Michael sitting down getting ready to eat that filet mignon panini. And I thought, boy, that sounds good. Huh. A filet mignon panini. <laughs> I was trying to figure out how I can make me one. My daughter has a panini machine. I might have to hit, I might have to hit that up, everybody. But anyway, because <laughs> mm, I love filet mignon. Um, so he was, they were talking about how concerned they were. So we're talking about somehow Michael couldn't get Phyllis, but Stark, maybe he wasn't inside the hotel. Cause he said, I saw you coming out of the hotel. Maybe he was already out and he followed her, you know, but he was her savior and he brought her back to his place. Right. And so he says, you know what? You've hit rock bottom. And I think you need a cause and I've got a plan and it's going, it's not going to fail. It's going to give you the justice you you're seeking the vengeance because I'm seeking vengeance and we're both seeking vengeance on the same person. So then they cut scene. And when we come back, he's already told Phyllis the plan, but we can't hear the plan. Right. And she goes, I can't do that. I can't get involved with that because I could lose everything. I could lose my family. I could, he goes, Shh, looks like you already lost everything. And she looks at him and she says, she stumbles up from the couch because he had given her a little mineral water, but she stumbles up, she gets her little purse and she goes, you know what? And she gets to the door. I really don't think your plan is gonna work. And he says, well, I'm going through with my plan with or without you. See, because you're not the only one that wants revenge on Diane. You just miss out on getting revenge. And I'm thinking, 
Who else could start talk to that would remotely go in in leagues with him? Ashley wouldn't at all. Tucker was not going to. Nikki certainly is not going to. So who could Tucker, the plan is illegal, not Tucker, Stark. Who could Stark, the plan is illegal, who can he get to, to go in league with him? The only person is Phyllis. She's the only loose cannon that would do that, right? So she leaves. And I mean, she still got all these smudges, smudges, smudges. I'm looking at a little smudge there too. Smudges, 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 smudges. <laughs> Getting out the elevator and Billy is down there. And Billy takes one look at her and is thinking, whoa, whoa, are you okay, Phyllis? And she's kind of holding the, holding the wall because trying to steady herself. And she goes, what makes you ask that? And so he says, because you look, uh, you guys haven't heard my dog in a while, huh? Right? And he goes, because you look a little uh, worse for wear, like you've seen better days. And she goes, like almost thank you for that but no thank you for that. <laughs> and so she goes, I'm looking for Jack. I need to find Jack. Um, do you know where he might be? And so Billy says, well, I just found out from Kyle. He took Diane away for a romantic getaway. And Phyllis looks at him and he goes, you do know they are back together. And I mean, back together romantically, right? And Phyllis just looks at him and she goes, Yes, I know. And she doesn't say anything about it. And he goes, so yeah, I don't I don't know where he's at. So then the next thing we hear, Stark is pouring himself a stiff one and knock on his door. And it's Phyllis. And she looked at him and she said, well, we all knew she was going to say. We all knew it. Amen. And he looks at her like, I knew you would be. <laughs> really he called that all she she just needed a little nudge to justify herself right to justify justify so let's go to comic corner comic corner brooklyn says congratulations you deserve it 1000 more with the quickness <laughs> and 1000 yeah let's see how long it takes for that 2000 but 1000 was the milestone brooklyn also said diane talking about wanting jeremy dead mm -hmm. Probably she's the one who's going to kill Jeremy and Jack will take the fall. Absolutely. Okay. I told you we had John Abbott going to jail over Kiri killing Gloria's ex, terrible Tom. Let's see what they're going to do with um, uh, Jack. So that is going to happen. That sound my dog, Oliver. He's trying to get out the door, but he's going to have to wait. Um, Annette says, Yet, pretty hat lady, congrats, congrats. I bet Victoria wants you on her team. <laughs> Listen, Victoria Newman would have to work for me, not the other way around, right? Jeremy Stark will set Phyllis up. He's trying to find a fall girl, but see, he, he just don't know Phyllis. Phyllis is nobody's fall girl. Well, I don't know. She's going to be drunk. She might be somebody's fall girl. Um, and then Annette says, wait until Phyllis hears about Sally or oh, that she's pregnant. Well, I don't know. What would she care if Sally's pregnant with Adam's child? And then Unique 1049 says, congratulations, Miss Recap. That's daily recap lady. Okay. I'm happy for Jack and Diane. It's their time. They go back uh, when Terry Lester played my favorite Jack. Okay. Um, the Phyllis that Y and R show Friday is the true Phyllis unhinged. She's always been this way nuts. Yeah, she has been crazy. Um, I remember her first days obsessing over Christine's husband, Danny, right? Libby says, squeak some more. I love to see you in deep red oh you saw me when i did the general hospital recap yeah i changed it for the celebration um let's see that would look stunning on you wait i'd love to see you oh you love seeing 
Love to see you in deep red. You didn't did you see me in deep red before? Or maybe you didn't see it. Was that a suggestion, Libby? And here I am, right? Here I am. Or did you see me, uh, the little previews of the general hospital recap? Um, and then you talked about <laughs> purple is a good color for a queen. Excited to see what you choose. Oh yeah, I chose the red. You know, I, I do wear red. It's just, trust me, I have, I have enough black for every single day of the week. And plus, black is just non-descriptive. It's about the recap, not about me. So that's why I chose the black. It's really my uniform. It's my kind of signature uh, wardrobe. Um, and then it says, Diane's being a scaredy cat, the helpless persona again. And so um, tedious. It's so tedious. Um, it's like the writers don't know where to go again. If Sally has um, that blood pressure problem, why doesn't she have an in-home cuff to take her pressure? I know the doctors would re recommend that. Of course, I'm not sure uh, what she should do about her toe. What does she stub her toe? Uh, maybe she should wear clogs for the next eight months. Um, I worked in a drug and alcohol treatment and saw folks act just the way Phyllis did. Illogical and angry. Michael and Lauren were so funny. Those scenes were fantastic. It looks like the show um, could get exciting again. So much potential. Please don't let the writer screw this up. I know, but they probably will. And Belinda says, congratulations. You are worthy. You are a beautiful Nubian queen. I'm so happy for you. Talking about the 1,000 subscribers. I hate to say it, but I got a feeling the writers are going to are setting us up for Sally to have a miscarriage. Phyllis is heading for a nervous breakdown. Uh, Jeremy Stark is going in for the kill and he's going to pull Phyllis into his web of revenge on Jack and Diane, especially when she finds out they're engaged. Well, she found out they're together and together. And then when they come home, Diane's going to be able to, she's going to get and, and come make sure she goes where Phyllis is at and go. The engagement ring will be right here, right? She'll go. Oh, this new thing. This is from Jack. Yeah, Diane's going to make sure she rubs it in Phyllis's face, but that's okay with Jack, right? If Diane flaunts their relationship in Phyllis's face, that's okay. LaShanta says, okay, Phyllis said she wanted Diane dead, but Diane said the same thing about Jeremy. Summer and Daniel is going to uh, regret treating their mother like that. Very disrespectful. Vicky... Vicky's true colors coming out. Devon's going to be intrigued. I feel bad for Phyllis, but she is good when she is bad. Audrey's a snake dropping hits in Elena. From the preview, Summer's going to team up with Nikki. She's a hypocrite. Um, Michael ain't nothing because Phyllis and Lauren warned and Nikki warned him about Diane and he wouldn't budge. He knew she wasn't no good. I know, Michael. I don't understand his, his stance on that. Because remember, he was standing, he just would not, you know, do what they wanted or even just keep his distance. But yet, do you ever see him together after him making that ripple? No, you don't ever see him and Diane together. Um, Phyllis is spiraling and Daniel told Summer this and nobody seems to care. Those words Summer said to her mother really cut her. She's a doormat for Kyle, Jack, and Diane. Shaking my head, everything Phyllis said came true. Phyllis is my favorite character on The Young and the Restless. She will prevail. Um, Jack's soul gone. I can't wait to see him get his. Uh, Diane's all shaky now, but wasn't she in her element? Oh yeah, remember, I have Stark. I can handle him. Watch me work, everybody. Watch me work. Jeremy Stark can't do nothing. He don't have nothing on me. And now she's, oh, Stark, he won't go away. He won't leave us home. That's why I fast forward every bit of Diane. Every bit of it. Uh, let me see. Ashley told Jack Diane wasn't a victim. Devon, take the gloves off because they think they took something. Uh, you worked hard for yeah, they think something you took, you worked hard for. Now Lily's want to whine. 
uh, this is her fault. Give Devon his company back. Because she did say in the beginning, if it don't work out, Devon, we could just go in separate ways. She didn't say, and we're going to take everything from you. You're going to be going with nothing, right? Because I love you, brother. And then Medora says, congrats, congrats, congrats. All right, all right. That's Comment Corner. This is my special celebration, celebration um, daily recap for 1,000 subscribers, everybody. So thank you for your support. We're going to do something special on Saturday. You're going to see a live Google, um, a live Google live stream. I've got some special invited guests that are going to be on with me. And I look so forward to it. So special invited guests, you'll be getting an email from me uh, tomorrow. All right, everybody have a phone or, or Wednesday the 8th, Wednesday the 8th. I will be back for another daily recap of The Young and the Restless.